Satterley was born in Tampa in 1931, but moved to Tallahassee when his parents were hired to teach at Florida A&M University. Both Nat and his brother Julian inherited their love for music from their father, who had passed down his trumpet to each of them in succession. From 1951 to 1953, Nat served in the U.S. Army, playing cornet in the Army Band. A chance performance in 1955 at Cafe Bohemia in Greenwich Village, New York, led to the first offer for the brothers to record their music. In 1956, they founded the Cannonball Adderley Quintet, who recorded their first hit, This Here, in 1959. During the 60s, Adderley acted as cornetist, composer, and manager for the quintet. I think the, the material that Nat is most famous for is uh, a lot of his hard bop material. I'm thinking specifically of his material when he uh, joined his brother in the sort of mid to late 50s uh, and onward. Things like Sack of Woe or Jive Samba, some of these things that really groove hard, work song, uh, these are sort of iconic pieces that I think people associate regularly with Cannonball, but are really written by or associated with Nat Hatterley. And so that, those, those kind of pieces, I think, especially the hard bop stuff is really especially good. Nat was a very gifted player um, and composer. Um, probably his most famous work is Work Song, um, which you know, won numerous awards and was covered and, and recorded by just about everybody in the, in the 60s at some point, in the 70s. He also wrote Jive Samba. He was, he was a, a gifted composer, wrote many of the hits that Cannonball, that Cannonball Adderley Quintet recorded and, and had. After his brother died suddenly from a stroke in 1975, the quintet broke up. After taking touring options in Europe and Japan, Nat began to teach courses at Harvard University. Adderley spent half the year touring and the other half at home in Lakeland, Florida, writing and recording. In 1987, I came back to start teaching at Florida Southern. And um, Robert McDonald, who was the chairman of the department at that time, called me into his office one day and said, Larry, we have some opportunities to, to write some grants. Do you have any, any ideas on what we could do with some grant money. So why don't we, why don't we try to put on a jazz festival? And that would be, you know, that would be a good, good use of some grant money and something that's not in this area. It, it would be something new and different. And so I called Nat and invited him to come in for a meeting. Being the gracious guy that he was, he immediately said, yeah, I'll come in and talk to you. And, and he came in and he sat back and, and he said, a jazz festival in Lakeland, that's impossible. Let's do it. And that was, that was the attitude that he always brought to things. Let's, you know, if it's impossible, we can do it anyway. Let's do it. Let's just do this thing. In 1997, he joined the faculty of Florida Southern College as an artist in residence. That same year, he was inducted into the Jazz Hall of Fame in Kansas City. There's a lot of really um, sort of educational and community benefit, benefits from his time here in Lakeland. Uh, that's one of the first questions people ask me all the time is, hey, are you bringing the Child of the Sun Jazz Festival back? Um, his impact on jazz, his, his influence is um, really quite strong. Um, he, he has, he's been a, a leader in the jazz, had been a leader in the jazz world for, for many years. Sometimes he kind of floated under the radar. Um, he, he never got the, the acclaim, say, of a Miles Davis or Dizzy Gillespie or, you know, there, but there's so many guys out there. Um, but, he, but he was a very influential and, and well-known, well-revered figure in the jazz world. And his music is extraordinary. I was always impressed in, in Nat's improvisations at the originality, uh, the ideas that he had when he was playing. And his music is certainly well worth anybody seeking out. It's very approachable. You don't get tired of it. Even the early recordings from the from the 50s are still fresh. And that's a you know that's a timelessness that is a part of great art. And I think that's significant in itself. 